What's going on, Internet? Iron Jordan here. So today I wanted to bring you a simply amazing deck profile. I know I promised that I would be getting you DBS content next, and I will. I am actually working on a video right now as we speak, or as this uploads, or as you're watching this, I promise. I'm working on a video for you DBS guys. But I've got the Yu-Gi-Oh bug, what can I say? And just look at Amazement Administrator Arlecchino. What a hunk, right? Look at him. Now, beyond his looks, Amazement Administrator Arlecchino and the rest of the Amazement uh, lineup have a very fun and unique playstyle. On top of that, they've roped me in with the fact that it's Purple Dot Deck, and recently I've been shifting away from my combo origins, so long DDDs, and closer to something like Trap Burning Abyss or Trap Shadal. And now, Amazement Trap Dogmatica? Before we hop into the deck proper, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, MetaMonster Gaming. If you are looking for Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering, Digimon, or DBS singles, you can find them at any of the links in our description of this video. You can also use my creator code at their TCG store, IronJordan5, for 5% off of any of your purchases. Enough shilling, let's hop into the video proper. Now, why amazements? Well, very simply put, this archetype has a lot of potential, I liked the card art a lot, and I've grown to enjoy purple dot deck strategies. This fulfills all three of those. This card has, this deck has some absolutely insane individual pieces in its core, and I think it will only get better in time. I don't think it's quite a tier 1 strategy yet, but it's teetering on Rogue or tier 2 for sure. Now let's talk about the individual card by card. Amazement Administrator Arlecchino has three effects. The first one is you can banish any number of attraction traps from your graveyard, then target that many cards your opponent controls and destroy them. That is a once per turn, on your turn effect. You can only use each of the following effects of Amazement Administra Administrator Arlecchino once per turn. If a trap card is activated except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. Now that's by either player, so that's really nice. If your opponent normal or special summons a monster except during the damage step, you can target one of those face-up monsters they control, equip one attraction trap from your deck to that target really really nice so the trap card is already activated and you can use it this combo is really well with a card called infinite impermanence that we are playing at three of in our deck if we open infinite impermanence and we open arlecchino which is not unlikely considering that we play three of both and our opponent starts to combo off on turn one we can use the imperm to turn off one of their monsters then we can play arlecchino from our hand and then if our opponent summons more monsters and tries to combo off more we can uh, activate a horror house or a cyclone coaster directly from our deck and start to get the ball rolling on disruption before our opponent even passes to us which is really really nice Next we have Amazement Attendant Comico, which I am convinced now after playing quite a few hands with this deck, is the best card in this deck. When this card is normal summon, you can set one attraction trap directly from your deck. Now, if this is all this card said, it would still be the best card in the deck. However, it's not. Quick effect. You can target one of your attraction traps equipped to a monster, equip it to one Amazement monster you control, or one face-up monster your opponent controls. You can only use this effect of Amazement Attendant Comica once per turn. This is sometimes useful. Uh, Mostly I use this to dodge the uh, the death of Comica. Well, not the death of Comica, but the death of the card that's attached to it. So if you normal summon Comica, you attach Horror House to it, then you use the Horror House effect. The Horror House is now dead for the rest of the turn, but you can still use it on your opponent's turn, assuming that Comica survives. If your opponent's able to normal or special summon something that can run over Comica, though, and not Amazement Attendant Arlecchino, you can then use the Comica effect to attach it to the Arlecchino. That way you can have an infinite impermanence for the next turn. Or I guess you could equip it to your opponent's monster if you really need to book a moon that card. This card is absolutely insane, and uh, you should never play less than three of it. Next, we're going to talk about Amazing Time Ticket. This is a quick play Cursed Eldland for this deck, except it's better somehow. Mostly because it's a quick play, but also because it has effects on either turn, depending on whose turn it is. Do you have all your Amazement monsters already in your hand? Excellent. Just set this card, and then you'll get whichever Amazement Trap you don't fetch with Comic off the normal summon. That's really good. Is it your turn and you need to get an Amazement Monster in your hand? Excellent, it does that as well. This card's absolutely insane. It's the only green card we play in our deck, and it's just because it's the nuttiest. This is quite possibly the best searcher in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, besides maybe Nadir Servant, which you can play in this deck if you'd like to, but uh, I'm not paying for those. So, yeah. This card's great. It's just absolutely insane. Uh, if this deck ever becomes Tier 1 or better, then this card for sure will get hit, but it's a little early to be talking about that, specifically since the engine isn't doing anything crazy as of right now. Moving on to the Attraction Traps, we have two of them that are worth playing currently and a third one that's worth playing in the sideboard. 
We have a Maze Attraction Horror House, which is either a Book of Moon or a Imperm, depending on which card it is attached to. They have different effects depending on if they're attached to your monster or your opponent's monster. You're usually going to attach this to your opponent's monster because the Imperm is almost infinitely more useful with all the Link 1 decks running around. Because if your opponent just links ones the monster that you were going to Book of Moon, then it doesn't matter. Then we have Cyclone Coaster. If it's equipped to your monster, it is a MST. If it is equipped to your opponent's monster, it is another time ticket that you don't have to pay for, which is really, really nice. Moving on, the engine that is mostly being splashed here is the Dogmatica stuff. We have three Ecclesias to search out our punishments or our Fleur de Lis or our Maximus. We have two Maximus just to negate effects. I'm sorry, two Fleur de Lis to negate effects. One Maximus, which is the card I'm not super sold on yet in this deck, but it does have its uses. It's especially bad in mirror matches. Three Ash Blossoms, because it's probably the best universal hand trap in the game. Three Imperm, because not only is it a trap, but its effect negation is uh, very prominent right now. In fact, you could even make an argument that Ash is less powerful in some matchups than like Fetch Veiler or Ghost Bell, but its general all-purpose just makes it a safe card to run. Next, we're going on to Dogmatic the Punishment. This is just the best trap card in the game, in my opinion. It is a two-for-one in most cases, thanks to Elder Entity Intest existing. And I do believe that in some point in the future, not anytime soon, but I think that some point in the future that Punishment will get Elder Entity Intest banned as she has had a history, kind of like her brother Norton, of only being used in ways that she wasn't intended to be used, where she's specifically only ever used to be dumped to the graveyard straight from the extra deck. And uh, I don't know if, how healthy that is or conducive to good gameplay on Konami's part. Next we have three Torrential Tribute. That card's just insane, so you play it. Three Compulse. This is very interesting. The reason why Compulse is really good is because uh, it's very good with Arlecchino for the most part. If you have more traps on the graveyard, you can bounce the Arlecchino back to your hand if your opponent targets it with anything. So you can save it and then you can flip another trap card and then summon the Arlecchino back out if you haven't summoned one yet. It's also very good with Fleur de Lis for the same reason because Fleur de Lis can be targeted by this, and if you haven't summoned a Fleur de Lis to your field yet, and you have like an Ecclesia or whatever on the field, you can then resummon this to negate a monster's effects, which is very, very nice. We have one Schism, simply because we can play it very easily with the Dogmatica stuff, so I have a feeling that the Dogmatica stuff and the Shadal things will be tied to each other until something like Nadir Servant gets banned, or, I mean, we're not playing Nadir Servant, so... Maybe it won't. Maybe Schism has to get banned, but I don't know if the card is good enough to warrant that. Then we have three Solemn Judgment because I don't want to lose to Lightning Storm, I don't want to lose to Red Reboot, and I don't want to lose to Harpy's Feather Duster. So that's why we're playing all these cards. And that's it for the main deck. On to the extra deck, we have three copies of Intess. We have uh, two copies of Titanic Lad, although this is not mandatory. If you want to put something else in here, you totally can. The same thing goes for the entire Shadal package. We're playing two of each, although realistically, I think you really only need to play one of each. I just feel like playing two of each uh, ensures up your grind game a little bit, because if you dump a uh, app clone and a construct to the grave, you can make another construct. So why not, right? One Wind Pegasus at Igniser, it's just probably the best target to dump off of Punishment if you don't need to pop something with Intest right now, because it just sits in the grave and then sits as a gotcha whenever your opponent does anything that you don't like. One Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Cerberus, and one Boral Sword Dragon. These are flex spots, just like the second copies of the Shadals and the second copies of the Titanic Lad. They can really be whatever you want, but this is what I'm comfortable with, so this is what I'm running. There is one card that we do need to talk about, which is uh, Cyclone... Coast, I can't, I can't type. Cyclone Coaster, I think it's actually, well, I guess we're just going to type in a Maze Attraction. We are uh, live uh, searching this. I'm sorry, it's not Cyclone Coaster, it's a Maze Attraction Rapid Racing. This card uh, has an effect where it can shuffle cards from the uh, graveyard back into the deck if it's equipped to one of your uh, monsters, which is really, really nice. And so this is very good in the side deck against, like, Tritron and other decks that really, really need their graveyard. So I would highly suggest playing this. I don't typically build a side deck in programs like this when I'm showing off the deck simply because, A, I haven't even really played in any events yet. So even though I have a theory about what's good like this is right now, I haven't in practice used the deck yet to know for sure. But rest assured that as soon as we get out to Locals, which will probably be this weekend, that I will let you guys know exactly how well the deck does and how I'll be changing it going forward because, uh, 
I love this deck to pieces, and I cannot wait for it to get better and get more support. You can see uh, the card I was talking about earlier, uh, Amazing Traction Vanquish Viking. I'm very excited to get this card in Archetype of Compulse, essentially. So that's really nice. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I tried to keep it relatively short, even though I'm very excited about talking about this archetype. I hope you guys can tell. But if you have any suggestions on the deck build, let me know. We've tried multiple different things. Um, over the course of the past couple days, since I got the uh, cards in paper, I've tried a bunch of different... Uh, archetypes with this i tried eldritch which worked okay i tried wind witch which was strong but kind of bricky and then we splashed artifacts here and there and that was all right but if you hard drew the artifacts with arlie Kino, it was kind of messy so yeah but if you guys have any suggestions let me know in the comments below let me know if you enjoyed this video and what you guys want to see next because i am very open to suggestions and i promise i will get the pbs video out to you guys i just punched the crap out of my mic that is horrible. I'm going to stop rambling. I hope I see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.